welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about RISC-V, which is an alternative processor technology that's already being used in microcontrollers and embedded devices, and which may one day power mobile, desktop and server computers. Specifically, RISC-V is a free and open instruction set architecture, or ISA, that may become a major competitor to the closed ISAs used in today's x86 and ARM CPUs. In this video, I'm going to provide a non-technical overview of RISC-V, starting with the difference between open and closed ISAs. I'll then discuss the origins of RISC-V, introduce some of its key market players, and explore current and potential future hardware and applications. Finally, I'll say something about RISC-V, global politics, and limits on international trade, as these will play the most significant role in determining RISC-V's success. Today, practically all computers are based on one of two closed instruction set architectures. The first of these is x86, or technically x86-64, with most desktops, laptops and servers having an x86 processor from Intel or AMD. The x86 ISA was created by Intel and then extended into its current 64-bit incarnation by AMD, with the two companies having licensing agreements that allow both of them to design and sell x86 CPUs. Alongside x86, today's other dominant ISA is ARM, with practically all Android and iOS devices and new Apple computers having a processor based on ARM intellectual property. Many different companies design and manufacture ARM processors, but because the ARM ISA is closed, they all have to pay license fees to ARM Limited, which hence maintains control of its technology. In contrast, the RISC-V ISA is free and open. This means that anybody can design and sell a RISC-V processor core without any constraints on their actions. The designs for RISC-V cores may then be used in the design of microcontrollers, CPUs, systems on a chip, or other components, which may in turn be manufactured in a fabrication plant. Whilst the RISC-V ISA is free and open, it's up to the designers of RISC-V cores and chips to decide whether the intellectual property they have created will be placed in the public domain. This means that not all RISC-V technology is open hardware, with some RISC-V core and chip designs being open and some being closed. In addition to having no intellectual property restrictions, the RISC-V ISA can also be freely extended. New instructions are added via a custom ISA extension which does not break compatibility with the main RISC-V specification. This gives designers great flexibility to incorporate new instructions for their particular applications, which can be particularly liberating when creating custom processors for use in cars, robots, and a wide range of other industrial and consumer products. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing and describes a computing architecture that executes a large number of simple instructions to complete a task. An alternative to RISC is CISC, which stands for Complex Instruction Set Computing, and executes a small number of more complex instructions to complete a processing activity. Today, the difference between RISC and CISC is more blurry than it used to be. But we may still describe the x86 ISA as CISC, and the ARM ISA as RISC. So, what about RISC-V? Well, RISC-V is a specific RISC processor architecture whose development commenced in May 2010 in the Parallel Computing Laboratory at the University of California, Berkeley. One of the first ever RISC architectures was created at Berkeley between 1980 and 1984, with RISC-V getting its name because it's the fifth generation of Berkeley RISC. RISC-V was initially created to support research and education, with the first RISC-V instruction set manual published as an open source document in May 2011.
To make it possible for Risk V to be used in industry, in 2015 a non-profit governing body was established. This was initially called the Risk V Foundation and based in the United States. However, due to concerns relating to the potential impact of future US trade regulations, in 2020 Risk V's governing body relocated to Switzerland and became Risk V International. Today, Risk V International has over 2,000 member organizations, with premier members including Alibaba Cloud, Google, Huawei, Intel, Sci5, Star5, and Western Digital. Strategic members also include Allwinner, Arduino, IBM, Nokia, Nvidia, Qualcomm, Raspberry Pi, Rockchip, Samsung, Seagate, and Sony. So, as we can see, there is widespread support for RISC-V development across the computing industry. Many organizations have also developed RISC-V processor cores. A leading player is Sci-5, which was founded in 2015 by the team who designed the RISC-V ISA at UC Berkeley. In 2016, Sci-5 became the first company to release a RISC-V system on a chip, and has now developed three families of RISC-V cores that span from energy-efficient microcontrollers to high-performance processors able to run full operating systems. These core designs are sold to other companies to use in their products, with Sci-Fi reporting that billions of chips have already been shipped based on their RISC-V cores. Just one high-profile customer is Samsung, who incorporates Sci-Fi cores into components that include AI image sensors and 5G modules. Another leading player is T-Head. T-Head is the semiconductor division of Alibaba and, over the past few years, has introduced a family of RISC-V cores called Shante. Applications range from basic microcontrollers, networking and 5G telecommunications to industrial automation, information security, computer vision and autonomous driving. In October 2021, T-Head open-sourced the design of four of its Shante cores, as well as indicating that it would open-source more RISC-V cores in the future. According to the company, over 2 billion CPUs with a Shante architecture have now been shipped. In addition to Sci-5 and T-Head, other notable developers of RISC-V processors include Andes Technology, Allwinner, Cloudbear, Codasip, Iconic Works, Nuclei, Star5, Cintacore, and Western Digital. At the time of making this video, at least 111 RISC-V core designs have been placed in the public domain by 55 organizations or individuals, along with the designs for 12 complete RISC-V systems on a chip. Other RISC-V cores and SOCs have been developed but remain closed source. This is also to be expected and, as previously noted, we should not expect the designs of all RISC-V cores or final processors to become open source. The first company to launch a RISC-V processor and development hardware was Sci-5, when it released the Freedom Everywhere 310 SOC and its first Hi-5 development board in 2016. As we can see, this board has since been discontinued, that's hardly a surprise, but since it was released, billions of RISC-V processor cores have been incorporated into microcontrollers and embedded devices, which means that RISC-V is already becoming mainstream in this marketplace. The work of Western Digital, who have developed a family of RISC-V cores called Swerve to use in SSD controllers, also indicates how many of us are increasingly going to be using RISC-V technology, even if we're unaware of it. When it comes to desktop computing, RISC-V hardware currently remains developmental, and in recent videos I've reviewed these single board computers. Specifically here we have the Vision 5, which is based on a Star 5 SoC with two Sci-5 U74 cores, and the Nazar, which is based on an Allwinner SoC with a single T-head C906 core. Both of these development boards can run a full Linux operating system with a graphical desktop, and hence demonstrate the potential for RISC-5 to one day join x86 and ARM in the tablet, laptop and desktop marketplace. Absolutely, there is some way to go before we have RISC-V chips 
powerful enough to make high-performance, price-competitive desktop computers and servers. But unlike some in the computing industry, I do believe that this is going to happen. There are, I think, two key reasons why RISC-V is going to become a mainstream end-user computing platform. And the first of these is what we could term the NVIDIA effect, because for some time it looked like NVIDIA was going to purchase ARM Limited. And that made many companies rather nervous because they worried about whether NVIDIA will continue to license to them the ARM ISA. And even though the deal has fallen through, NVIDIA is not going to purchase ARM Limited, it has left a legacy with companies more nervous and more aware than they used to be that they rely on licensing the ARM ISA from ARM Limited, and they can't guarantee the future of that company. And inevitably, this is making companies go towards the idea of using RISC V in their products. Secondly, and related and far more significant, is the fact that over the past 30 years or so, all countries have become far more dependent on microprocessors in, in their economy. That's obvious, we all use computers all of the time. And in parallel with that, we've seen a liberalisation of globalisation and of international trade. And so across the past 30 years, even though all countries have become very dependent on microprocessors, they've done so in an environment where they haven't been too concerned about the fact that access to those microprocessors could be constrained. However, in the past few years, that has started to change. For a start, we've seen significant trade barriers going up between the United States and China. And very recently, we've seen Russia's invasion of Ukraine and all the sanctions being placed on Russia as a result of that. And this has got lots of countries thinking about the fact that they aren't guaranteed to always have access to microprocessors with closed ISAs, chips from Intel and AMD, and chips with their IP license from ARM. And so it's not a surprise that the Chinese government is investing in RISC-V via the Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's not surprising that Russia has announced plans to build RISC-V processors to use in laptops and government computers. And it's not surprising that, for example, India has got an initiative for semiconductor self-reliance and is also looking towards RISC-V. And I think we're going to see more and more countries recognising they are dependent on microprocessors and that closed ISAs are potentially not a very good thing to be reliant on in that context, and looking towards developing their own microprocessor industries and basing that around RISC-V. And to me, it doesn't seem credible that that will happen and that we'll see some countries starting to use RISC-V in their desktops and laptops and servers and things, and other countries won't. I think once the technology exists to use RISC-V in a mobile device, in a desktop, in a server, it'll start to be used in those devices all around the world. And that doesn't mean that RISC-V will become the best technology. It might not be as good as x86 and ARM for many of these purposes, but it will work and it'll be available. And so I think in five to 10 years time, we won't have two dominant ISAs, x86 and ARM, we will have three, which will be x86, ARM and RISC-V. Anyway, that is now it for this video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.